All right, third time's the charm, guys. It's October 15th. We're here at the Acadiana Muscle Train Back. It's gonna be the same sets of movements we used at the P5 over there, except better equipment, because the muscle is king of equipment. Shout out to my boy Percy for putting it all in here. So, what has the week been looking like? The food has been getting way easier to get down, and I am leaning up fast. All I've been doing is walking, Guys, if you can get your metabolism fired up with good, clean, whole foods, high volume foods, get your training in order, get all systems going, simple things like steps, just walking makes the biggest difference for fat loss. You wanna avoid high intensity cardio. That will strengthen your cardiovascular system, but uh, it's not efficient at burning fat. You're gonna burn through all your muscle glycogen, then you're gonna tap into other stores. So then you're gonna have to refill the glycogen from doing all your cardio, from your training, you're gonna experience a constant battle trying to get back to these levels, get these reserves filled up so that you can maximize your performance. And you know me, I have to exceed every previous performance I've ever done. And it doesn't matter if I'm dieting for a bodybuilding competition or if I'm in the off season, performance is king. So when I enter a fat loss phase now, it's, uh, it's gonna be steps, man. I'm gonna ride these steps out as long as I can. It's just working so well. Eric can put up some footage that I got for check-ins a couple days ago, and, and you'll see him in feathered quads already. Things are hardening up just so fast, so things are moving quick. But yeah, I'm going to warm up and get into training back. See you on the top set. All right, here we are. One of the best back machines ever made. Guess who made it? Nautilus. Guess who helped launch Nautilus? The creators of high-intensity, heavy-duty training. Go fucking figure. Go figure, right? I mean, it only makes sense. The people who had the bright enough minds to uh, understand how to train, pull up, pull up, tr train properly. I cannot talk. Go figure. The bright minds who understood training philosophy made great exercise equipment. Logic would dictate, right? So I'm warm. I'm gonna do the isolateral pull down. You guys saw me using the mag grips when I would train at, uh, at P5. The mag grips are great because they put the hand in that supinated position, which is a really nice, easy position to pull through. What's great about this Nautilus machine is you can set it up however you want and you're gonna notice that I'm gonna turn into that supinated position. Your hand position with performing movements for back does not matter. It does not affect what part of the back is being targeted. It's really all in your elbow position and all what you're braced against, which I'll move on to when I do do something chest supported here in a second, but uh, so isolateral, we're gonna do one arm at a time. I don't know where my lifting straps are, so we're just gonna fucking, we're gonna grab it with our dick beaters. <laughs> we're gonna test how strong my dick beaters yeah, are. Yeah, baby. This might not represent me well. Don't think that. Yeah, yeah we'll draw your own conclusions. All right, so 140 on here, it's fucking heavy. I think the last I did was 130, 135. With a little catch weight system. I wanna do isolateral. I wanna train my left side first, develop a better connection with it, get better motor unit recruitment on that one side, less perceived exertion. Oh, yada, 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 here we go. So like we talked about on the last episode of the Iconocast, the speed of your negatives really isn't a factor. It's, as, it's an auto-regulation, right? So I'm controlling it and it seems slow on the way up because I don't want it to jerk me around because it is heavy and I don't want to lose control of the implement. So I have to hold that a little bit slower. If I were working with a lighter weight, you know, that transition from contracted to extension would be, uh, way less taxing or way less demanding in terms of that regulation. So I am just controlling it as I need to, to go up. It's not about three seconds. It's not about four seconds. It's not about slow. It's not about fast. It's about safe and keeping my mind in the game. That was adequate. I think we got eight reps, seven or eight. So we could technically go up next session and reset the progression. Rest a little bit. I know my right arm is strong. My right side is strong. So not a big concern. I don't have to wait too long. Somebody online told me I looked inbred today. I look inbred, guys. I think what he meant was purebred. I think that's what he meant. Purebred Belgian blue. Oh, and guess what his physique looked like, guys? It was dog shit. Ah! Ah! 
So we're going to use the principle of homesis and uh, we're going to accrue more micro tears by periodizing our volume because I'm so fucking stupid. Yeah, fucking nerds that aren't even smart enough to be nerds. It's hilarious. These people don't even understand how hypertrophy occurs. Ah, yet they want to throw slurs and insults at you. Absolutely ridiculous. Told me of all people to read a book. You know what's funny is I didn't need to read any books. I followed logic and I read Hanneman's size principle and understood motor unit recruitment and mechanical tension. And I've read zero books. I didn't even read Mike Mincer's heavy duty. I listened to the man speak. I followed out his thought process and applied it. You guys periodize your volume. Go ahead, keep it up. Me and my boys, we're gonna do one set. So class is in session. Maybe you know what, I'll write a book. Instead of reading one, I'll write a book so I can educate you guys on how to properly train. Not you guys, not you listeners. The, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna come up with words for these mongoloids. What I was saying a second ago about uh, positioning and anchoring in relation to where force is applied. So here we have a chest supported row, right? We could do a lot. We could target a lot of different things with this setup. Primarily, it's gonna be based on our elbow position. If we took our elbows in, we're gonna be driving through with our lats. As our elbows are gonna come up, we're gonna be working our way up the back. Another way that we can um, help guarantee our energy transfer is by what position on the body are we stabilizing through. So the, the lower I brace myself on my abdomen, the lower down my back that force is gonna be transferred through. All right, so if I'm pulling here with my elbows tucked, I'm gonna be working the mid back and lower lats. Now, if I let it creep further up my chest, you can see how that energy would be transferred up through the center of my back, upper back, elbows higher, upper back, right? So that's what we're gonna be using this for. We train the lats exclusively over there on the Nautilus Nitro pull down. I will be doing a bilateral movement here. And it's simply because I cannot feel that I get a great contraction on the area I'm trying to target when I'm not training lats. So trying to work the upper back isolaterally, it, it just doesn't do it for me. I don't have a setup that guarantees me that stimulus I'm looking for. I'm gonna wanna twist my body and I'm gonna end up recruiting my lats anyway, because that's gonna be my primary driver. So with the setup with the chest positioning and the elbow positioning bilaterally, I can kind of guarantee that I'm hitting that area I want to. Well, I can guarantee I hit it where I want to, not kind of. It's gonna to torch my upper back, my rear delts, my teres minor and major, and that's what I'm looking for. Now, we were doing the, uh, the hammer strength low row, but I've got the machine maxed out, and I don't really like the way that the, um, the little bands to put on it to help overload it further. I don't like the setup, so we could train the upper back here, hence why I'm showing you the, uh, where to set up the chest support, how to set up the elbow positioning, you know, so you can really dig into that area we're wanting. Now, Eric's gonna put up some footage from that posing session, and I want you guys to look at the back double bicep and the rear lat spread. And I say this so that you guys can see that only with a few months of implementing specific work, prioritizing it at the beginning of the workout to prioritize the upper back and the middle back, you can see how much advancement I've made on my traps. It's actually quite crazy and substantial. So when I sent that check in to Phil, I said, how's the mid back now, motherfucker? I just thought that was pretty funny because that was his critique to me as I needed to bring that area up and maybe I needed to do more volume for it. <laughs> I will never do more volume because that would make me worse. But I will prioritize, I will stabilize, I will find the most efficient means by which to stimulate and target a specific region, which is what we did and it worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another couple plates to this and you guys can see the top set in action. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through a little something. So these prime machines have different positions where you can load the weights on and this determines where your load is in the arc of the movement or rather in the, the path of the implement. So loaded here and here, I am prioritizing the weight in the beginning and middle of the rep. I'm really, really strong in my contracted position and I can manage, I can hold it and squeeze it and 
really control my negative super easily. So what I want is to kind of overload in my more disadvantaged positions or rather in the course of the rep through the middle where I'm really forcing the most output in the starting position. So I've got it a mix in between a little more so in the middle, but I am going to uh, start here in my progression. This is a over three plates. So we got 425s and a 45. So that's 145 pounds on it. I think I could probably add another 25, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's get started. Well, that's my wife. She's into inbred dudes. Like me. Oh, I just said you were into purebreds. Purebreds stud animals like myself. I'm not conceited guys. My family lineage for the last 500 years can be traced back to a very specific area. And I mean, exclusively the last 300 to Acadia. So within the same five families and those same five families migrated here to Louisiana in the same area. And I can trace my direct lineage for the last 200 years and to the same, you know, the same little small town. You're talking purebred as it gets, or as maybe like old boy said, maybe I'm just inbred. Goddamn inbred. Inbreeding never looks so good. My wife's people all came from Acadia Village too. I mean, her family name is on the plaque. My family names are on the homestead maps along the river. So whether you like it or not, we're related, baby. Cousin loving ain't ever been sweeter. And just let me spurg out on a little something before I uh, get into the set. Do not send your de your your DNA to a place like Ancestry.com. These are all gene collection banks that will use your information for nefarious purposes. So they're gonna make some kind of little clone on, of you to like torture with a uh, fake viruses or rather genetically engineered strains of evil do your own family history research my uncle wrote a book on mine and it was it's quite fulfilling to learn where your people come from it's pretty cool shit i'll show you guys where uh these gains come from right now My hands look like they're about to peel apart. I didn't have my straps today, so we just we just used the old dig beaters. That was a gnarly set. Yeah, you can definitely see what got trained, you know? So yeah, that's how you can set it up to uh, train your upper and middle back right there. You know, the chest support across, directly behind the area you want to be trained. Elbow position, you want to get the lats out of it, move the elbows up and out. Felt really strong going in. Quickly had to recruit more motor units. You know, maybe I spoke too soon, guys but uh, overloading this machine with the little rubber bands is gonna be sufficient if I put it toward the end of the workout. So like we did on the other back days at the uh, P5, we saved everything for, we saved our scapular retraction for after our vertical and horizontal pull. So now we're gonna pull from below and uh, this is going to be sufficient. We're gonna be able to do this. Um, because it feels real nice and heavy just retracting the scapula with two plates in the bands. So I had four plates. I was using four previously when I prioritized the upper back or rather the traps at the beginning of the workout and I was running out of room to overload. But I'll be able to progress for a long time with these little bands because they're under quite a bind right there and the further I get toward contraction, they get really heavy. So this should be more than sufficient. Let's go right in. Again, the purpose of the traps is to Tracked. The scapula, that's what I want to do. I want to make all of that grow right there. When we pulled from the mid, we got more of the Terry's minor major rear delts. I felt really strong and the center of my back. So now we're going to be training the traps. Enough talk. Let's go for more action. <clears throat> Yeah, that was the end. I couldn't even, I couldn't even pull my shoulder blades back anymore. 
That was brutal. Look at those traps popping. I mean, from the beginning to that, it, I can see the difference. I can see them exploding in the mirror in front of me. I was embarrassed by how red I was turning, how much pressure that was putting on me, how much effort I was having to use it. <laughs> it almost seems ridiculous, but it's exactly what's required to stimulate real hypertrophy. Yeah, I could do way less intense sets and I'd be able to do a whole lot more volume and I would be wasting my time and yours, frankly. So there's a reason I do everything this way. Oh man. That's gnarly. Well, I honestly think that, that that's it for the workout. I will go ahead and do some uh, some back extensions to work my lower back and we'll call it quits after that. So here we have a, a weighted hyper extension machine. It's got a little plate loaded stack here, got a little handle. You see me use this in the past. Again, like I've, I've said in the other previous back training videos since starting this prep, the lower back and the erectors are just something I wanna give a little more attention to. Do they need it? I mean, judging by this angle right here, I'm not trying to do the, I'm not trying to pop my ass, but if I do pop my ass, you could see that large meat hump that comes off my lower back and those are my erectors so i'd be having a large erection there you know keeping me upright and that's what's going to create that christmas tree from behind that's what all that is, is where those lats tie in all that meat in the lower back just makes a real gnarly christmas tree not sure if you can see it right there but you've seen the christmas tree but yeah so i want to train that area i want to keep it stimulated i want to keep it uh growing to match the rest of everything else that way when i decide to kick back off my deadlifting career again i'm just going to pull 700 in my first couple months you know because i grew all the tissue and i i've deadlifted within the last five years so i haven't forgotten the movement pattern and then i'll just come in and just start crushing powerlifting records right i just can't get enough of this uh this angle right here just leaned over something, you know? Just look, it's so succulent. It's so meaty and thick. I'm really just stalling because this shit hurts. So I gotta be careful on these. This will dig into your hamstrings. So just watch out when you're doing this stuff fatigued because they are those are gonna be secondary muscle groups being trained here. Ah, oh, this ought to help my hammy. Oh. oh. So I incorporated way less glutes and hamstrings on this by moving the pad further up. I noticed that when it was a lot lower, I felt a lot of direct tension in uh, where that hamstring ties into that knee. And that's something I wanna avoid. I don't wanna pop my shit like my boy Renee did. Shout out to Renee, Lord of Phantasms, on the Instagram. He's like a super popular coach in Greece. He's such a stud, so successful. If only he trained like Billy, then he'd be big too. I love you, bud. He is big because he's tall. Yeah. 